And that's what we'll be talking about now. We bring in at this point, first via Zoom, uh, the co-founder of uh, Amoteko. Well, Razak Olokoba is here with me in the studio. Good morning Thank and you. welcome. Good morning. And of course, via Zoom, security consultant Femi Aratoko Ali. Thank you so much for joining us uh, from Good the United morning. Kingdom. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. All right. Good morning. Let me begin with you, Femi. Looking at the strides of um, you know, Amoteko, the Southwest Security Outfit. Uh, you know, this the role that they play now, especially when you compare it with the current challenges of the regular security forces. Uh, what do you make of this uh, this Amoteko innovation? Um, you see, thank you once again. Um, good morning, Nigerians, for having me on your program today. You know, um, in the face of everything, let's just give a round of applause for Amotekun in Ondo State for doing a very great job. At least, if at all we criticize them for so many things at this very point in time, we need to give kudos to Amotekun, to the Nigerian police force in Ondo State, and the governor himself, and the, um, the, the team leader here and leading Amotekun. It has not been easy for them, irrespective of the fact that they have poor welfare, lack of so many things, but Within all these, they are trying to apprehend and, you know, to contain and make sure that things work according to plans, according to their security business strategies in Ondo State. So give it to them. They are doing their best, but more still needs to be done. And a whole lot of community needs to now come together and see how they're going to engage with them in a more positive way to give intelligence gathering to make them work effectively. Well, um, the question is for you now. This uh, interception, sometimes people will say, uh, people are coming to town and you are just stopping them. Is there no free flow of, uh, of uh, people again? Is it not uh, their fundamental right to move about? Well, we, have to, we are supposed to define this long ago, the whole question of identity. I will keep saying it that uh, if you are moving from your region to another region, there's a cultural difference. And you can't impose your views, your lifestyle on other people. Mm -hmm. If it is a dressing pattern where you are coming from, to put all those. When you are coming to another region, it's not their pattern. And that is one of the areas Nigerians have a challenge on. Yes, one Nigeria, one Nigeria, but with different identity. If you look at the Bora, the Bora was killed by all Nigerians. The Bora never grew up to know that Nigeria, when it comes to religion, we are not one. And the parent needs to keep educating our children that they, the respect you have for your religion. I'm talking of Deborah who was killed in Sokoto. Sokoto yes, State. yes, yes, was killed mass, in Sokoto. Yeah, All of us yeah. killed because you, you never grew up to know that uh, when you are in the public, there's a limitation to certain things. So the same thing about about, about movement too. We need to keep talking to ourselves about the difference when, when you walk the street of. Yoruba land, I see some people putting dagger on, putting charms on. That's not the way we dress in Yoruba land. And that's the way we dress should be respected. If we don't do that, we we'll keep running into this kind of crisis. Of course, half of them may not be a security a challenge of our security, but they may not be. But half of them might be. But for people who are not security challenges to us, we put them in that situation because we have not been able to define that. And we need to define that. You can't be walking around with that guy. You can't be walking around with dangerous weapon. And you want to impress it or not that that's your dressing pattern. It can't be acceptable. And how can you be, and going, how can you be taking um, Okada? Yeah. To places where they are already banned. Ban ban Okada. So, so those are the challenges. Mm -hmm. And I think it's not going to get better. Because challenge in Nigeria is not going to get better until we admit that there's error in the security architecture of the country. Amateku is just an, we just, we have to improvise. We have to take the courage to go ahead with it. I, I remember that Makure Dulu was saying it's, uh, Amateku is a child of necessity. Yes, when, yes. When you look at, you know, the challenges yeah. and how well, our, you know, regular forces can combat them. Yes, they, they need to be given the required support that they needed. The arsenal is still rickety compared to what the kidnappers, the Boko Haram, the insurgents, compared mm. to what they have. Even when we have our armies engaging them, we, have, we, do, we do report of what the army used to say that they have subscribed. That's the army of, the, of Nigeria. Not talk about police or Amateku. So the needed support is still missing. If we don't do that, we are going to get to a point. We, have, we know we have won that we'll get to this point. 
We got to a point where we will not go to police again for security. If you want to apply a route, there will be a police, po their own post, we'll go and meet them. Mm -hmm. Can we pass this route? Mm -hmm. What's the fee you are going to charge us for us not to be kidnapped or for us not to be ready? We'll get to that point if you don't do something about it. And this is the time. Who are you even referring to now? The police. The, the, the police? No, the, 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 they are bandits. Absolutely. We'll get to a point where they are bandits. It's right. It's right. It's right. It's right. That's why they went to Turban and Road the other day. And it's going to escalate because they were the begging war. him. They will begging practically him, please, take. Please protect us from yourself. We, and we want that we are going to get to that point. They say, and they, we, they, they will the practically they take over the security of the country. Mm. What we need to do, the exit plan of the president, he needs to review it. When you are exiting a government, president don't keep quiet. You create a soft landing for the guy for the guy right. coming in. It's not as if well, the government is totally bad. We remember clearly when Jonathan was coming in, nobody was buying our oil again. Nobody was giving. No, nobody wants to listen to Nigeria. Again. But why he came on board with his profile? Remind us that. Remind us of the day you are building. Remind us of what Fashola is doing. Tell us about the agricultural program. You keep the public as a short memory. Mm. Public mm. as a short memory. You keep reminding us so that at least Nigeria will. See something to be looking at at this moment. It, it, less than a year to government. You can't be keeping quiet. Your agency can't be keeping quiet. You have been keeping be quiet keeping from quiet. the beginning. Mm. You, want to, you want to start talking mm. now? No, it's important because there are things that he has you done. Can't, you right. can't do the job, you the can't job, do what right. you cannot the do. The job of right. a president is not a keeping quiet job. The All job right. of a president is a talking job. And if you are not going to talk, talk to your agency. So on security issues, it may not get better until we explain to ourselves the fear for creating alternative security network. IG cannot secure the life of 250 million Nigeria. It's All not right. possible. I've said it over and over again. All right, Mr. Oloko, but let's, let's mm. head back now to get more uh, views from uh, security consultant Femi Aratuko Ale. So, and you know, there's this talk about now that Amoteku has, you know, taken off since 2020 or, or thereabout, now the, the current limbo that Amoteku, you know, still faces about, you know, not being able to carry uh, the arms that will. Uh, beat or at least match, uh, you know, the, the marauders. We recall, you know, sadly, the lives that were lost uh, at the uh, Owa church, now the um, Owa attacks in uh, June. Of course, people ha have yet to recover from that horrendous experience. Lives have been lost. People were maimed and may even be maimed for life. Before you uh, take that answer, see. Femi, my uh, apologies, before you take that answer, let's quickly head uh, out now to take a quick break and then we'll return for more on this discussion. Please stay with us. Thanks a lot for staying with us on TVC Breakfast. We've been speaking in the last couple of minutes about uh, empowering Amoteko, that's the Southwest security outfit that uh, has taken off. And then we also brought a report about their the latest effort to stop invaders coming into Ondo State. Right here in the studio, we have Razak Olokoba and joining us virtually from the United Kingdom, Femi Aratoku Ale. So we were, I asked you, uh, Femi, about how we yeah. can enable, uh, you know, Amoteko, for example, in the southeast, so they, they're having their own challenges now taking off with their own regional security outfit. But looking at, you know, the strides that Amoteko has made so far, as against the security lapses that we are still faced with in Nigeria, uh, what do you suggest? Um, you see, thank you once again. Um, you see, initially when Amotekun was created, I happened to be part of those that drafted their ideas and the way trainings will be done and the, way, the kind of material they should use and equally what kind of firepower they should use. But, however, you know, federal government will definitely kick against a lot of things. That's fine. But right now, we can see a very good result, a very good reason why Amoteco should be fully armed, just like we've armed the civil defense as well. It's not easy for Amoteco just to go into the bushes and forests and jungles just to apprehend criminals without having anything like a backup plan. We need to look for a way to equip them. But before equipping them, one thing we need to do is this. They need to be fully trained into how to use all these weapons and the major reason for them using it. Not probably to use it to start intimidating the community or intimidating their friends or enemies or whatsoever we have in the town. However, a lot needs to be done in terms of being coordinated by the Nigerian police and the military so that they can guide them onto how to use it, what to use, and what needs to be done. 
in the real sense, right now, the way things are, I think we need to give them kudos and we need to let them make use of what is necessary to let them combat these criminals they are combating. Remember one thing, they've apprehended about 151 or there about before. Now another interception has happened again. They are working. But the question is, what are they doing with those they've apprehended? Are they deporting them back to their community or to different states? Or they are putting them into prison? Or they are letting them just go? The community need to know all this. The member of public wants to know what is the result at the end of the day. So these are internal issues that need to be discussed and need to be addressed as well. What are the legal implications of this uh, matter? Because you have people who can come and say that, uh, look, look, look. You, you disrupted my movement, um, innocent. Uh, it, it will be very difficult to even say you want to criminalize them or prosecute them. We fear, we fear that uh, they could be dangerous to society, but it's still speculative. Yeah, but if, if, if you're saying this one, let me ask you one thing. What is the reason and what is the justification of you coming to a country or into a state underneath a truck? Why having so much ammunition on you? What do you want to do with all that? Do we have a constitution that guides you from using ammunition or using weapons anyhow? No, we don't have it. So they have serious questions to answer. Do they have ID card? How do we profile them? What do we know they are doing? Who exactly are they? Where are they going? Exactly. These are questions that need to be asked internally so that people can be at rest. We have a lot of foreigners around us in the community. A lot of people are scared. They don't know what to do. So Amoteku needs more hands. Amoteku needs more, more welfare. Amoteku needs more hands to support them in achieving all these results. This is my own take on this very issue. It's still critical. It's still early stages. But we don't want something that will overwhelm them and we won't know where to run to again. Razak, that yeah. Razak, that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. These people are getting into Undo State. But Undo, Undo is not the first state they pass through. How come they were able to cross through so many states before they got into the south? Mm. Well, you see, the go, save and accept Lagos state, who has seen the future. Mm. If you remove all the agencies that Lagos has mm. uh, created now. I was going to even go to that. Lagos yeah. will be in a big problem. Mm. So, from 1990 date, if you look at numbers of agencies that has given a pushing effect to traffic, environment, security, they have done well. But the five governors, mm. Maybe it's a question of courage. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I, I don't understand. When we sat down to discuss with them, we have created units. I am not, I, I run a security outfit as a civilian. But I listen to lectures, I listen to expert talk, and we need that there's a need for intergovernmental relationship between all the states. Mm -hmm. Where we have to train petrol attendants, women who say, we are on the road, mm -hmm. Uh, to be conscious. Organizers. No, as recruits for intelligence. That's what I mean, to be oh, no. conscious. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and, okay, and taking it further taking now by yeah. some But I don't think that has happened. So that no, as they move, my question mm, is not even that. Mm, it's mm. How, how they, could they That's what I'm saying. Yes. That's, what I'm, okay. that's what I'm saying. That, uh, so that immediately they leave their state and they are going into another state, they will have been alerted by these roadside uh, occurs, by farmers who see them on the road. And... It's part of the duty and responsibility of the presidency now. You need to incite us against insecurity. How mm -hmm. do you do that? You need to start talking to us. When they get to your community, what do you do? When you have 100 organized men, entire community of 500,000 people, what do you do? You need to be talking to us. Morale wins war. It's not about equipment. Mm -hmm. When you leave the morale of a nation, mm -hmm. they go out to go and win war. Look at all the wars who have fought all over the world. The leaders keep talking to them. Even with toothpick, you can win war. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you leave the morale of your people up, this is the time our leaders... Mm -hmm. So, since we are talking about Amantekuna, the, gov, the, the meaning five governors needs to go back to the drawing board. They need to work together. They need to establish the blueprint we give. Give them a blueprint, which was abandoned. And we say Wambata is not just for... It's not an employment tool. It's just someone who is committed to security of Yoruba land. It's not a job for security... I mean, political patronage, where party P leader will bring two slots and mm -hmm. you end up bringing Ajebota into it. Which was what they promised us that all these guns will be collected from them. We, we, we got information from bandits and said, okay, you are, we'll see what we're going to do to your people. So, completely agree with you that uh, there, there should be a concern. So, 
there should be that network. After Yoruba has done their own, then there will soon be a collaboration with the North Central, then which is, who is our neighbor. Right. So that there should be that collaboration, there should be that network among all of us, so that as there are movement, there the, the intelligence is, is it actually the, North Central report. or even what used to be the Midwest? What? In, in yes. North Central, yes, yes. No, no, the they Midwest. are our neighbors. They will come from Benin. Mm. Yeah, there should be a relationship mm -hmm. between one and the other. Yes, between the They go to so beyond, before they get, the before yeah. they get to North Central. Yeah, there should, they have yeah, to, there should before be. They, 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 they get to South West. They God pass bless you. Benin. So there should be a relationship with all of them. Mm. Yes. And, and, and if the president body language is not good about this, the governors may be scared, given the nature of who our governors are timid when it comes to confronting the, government, the president on serious matter of the As life this. of that people. Mm. They may be timid. And this is not the time to be timid with the lives of our people. So it's important for all the governors to start talking to each other. That's the way we can provide. But in the overall, when I'm attacking arrest now, do they have power to prosecute? That is the terrible thing Malami has done to us. Another in this thing, country. another, Malami another, did another thing. Malami did not advise the president right. well on legislation, on the right law to be made so that police, but when you make law as a state mm -hmm. government, you must enforce it. Federal government will not, police will not come and enforce your state laws for you, particularly if they don't like the law. Your states have a right to enforce your law with your own police, and that's the area Malami. It goes all over the country to see how their country is run when, when it comes to laws and rules and regulations. And you don't see a section that the role the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice should play in advising, no, this law is necessary. Let's back the state with the power to prosecute the criminals Amatekum has arrested on equal agencies all over the country as arrested. He didn't do that. What he kept doing is defending. We are not supposed to only defend the Constitution. You are also supposed to encourage the country to make the right Absolutely. laws. Laws that will promote peace and order and secure the lives of the people. That's an angle. Second angle, why Southwest seems to be where people come from, is about the service region now. So mm -hmm. we should also factor that, that, okay, there will be influx. Mm -hmm. People are escaping about that. That's why I said half of them may not be criminal. Why half may actually... Even the Ondo commandant said as much, you know, when he said that um, they will still be profiled in the arrest yes, of Monday. It is important. But um, like Femi said, the nature of how they were found, you know, may, might also be, okay, perhaps maybe they're just taking refuge in the interiors of the truck where they were found. We even understand that there were about four women Absolutely. there. But, but, but then the fact that, you know, they will hand over these people, if they are found to have the case to answer, they will, um, you know, hand them over to the police authorities. In, in on those stage, you know that also you know gives a kind of the limitations that Amoteku still has. That's, that should be, there should be required legislation, and that's why we are saying that if you are serious about security of our country, we need to sit down and explain to ourselves what is your fear about state police, about security layer. If your fear is actually that uh, they will become a uh, bodyguard to the governor, and we have said that where we have state police all over the world, there's also a, a, a law that will enable a president. To declare emergency and state that the governors has gone out of line. The parliament of our federal, at the federal level, will take a parliament that has gone. So also, the federal police will federalize the police of any state. There should be that section of the law. And that should be check and balances. So that the state police will act according to the law. You cannot, when last did last man arrest someone on the base of being a PDP member in Lagos. That's the question we must ask ourselves. If you say, uh, state police will turn to some so come to Lagos and see how agencies work here. Mm. These are state agencies, yeah. and they did not harass anybody based on the party it belongs to. Mm. They do their work. So state police must come around, mm. no matter how you don't like the, the name. And in running a nation, there should be mutual trust among ourselves. Mm. The, need, the, the, the thinking that uh, anything that is coming up is something, the people that is not mm. uh, 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 suggesting it. We have to remove it from our mind. If a region is talking about a state police, why must other regions think that this you are trying to create an army mm -hmm. when there's a glaring case of uh, security challenges in, in, in the mm -hmm. country? So, in summary, it is important for president to wake up. He can't exit the country in this manner. People still go to Bahia to talk to him. He existed very well. He knew the onions and he knew what he, he does. Uh, Jonathan also exited very well. The, the president must exit very well. I'm seeing his disciple. But that doesn't mean that that basic truth that we must not be able to tell ourselves, even as a supporter of Bari. The president needs to talk to us. He needs to do something about security. And what he needs to do about security now is start talking to Nigerians that you cannot hand over your country to criminals. You must not allow that. And the first step is also to demonstrate 
It will not assist the state. That's exactly what Afeni Ferry said. We saw um, a, a bit of their stance now reflected in the papers this morning. Afeni, uh, Afeni Ferry said to President Buhari, show the terrorists that you are still in charge. I mean, when you weigh this against uh, the controversy between state governors and the president, AGF Malami, you know, continues to talk and um, give controversial and stance now on the issue of state police. In fact, at a point he urged, he um, challenged the state governors to go on to the National Assembly now to, that that was where they should table their demands for, for state police as against now hitting the federal government, uh, saying that indeed the Nigeria police cannot uh, deal with the security problems of Nigeria this time. Um, you see, do you want me to say something about that? Carry on, Femi. Yeah. You see, uh, when the um, the presidency, Asurog and the the ministers, if they come together and they now say, okay, fine, governors were challenging you to take your decisive role and make sure that things are done the right way. Fine, they can do it. Because every quarterly, I guess, they were actually given the security budget vote. Fine. So allow the states to act according to how they want to rule and govern and secure their states. That is their primary job. So the federal government should not just interfere so too much into how are they going to do it. The question is, are they doing it the right way or doing it the wrong way? Are they actually um, trampling on human rights? Are they actually giving justice to who justice is not meant to be given to, and so on and so forth. Are they actually delivering the services they are meant to deliver? Those are the key things and the key indicators the federal government should be looking at. But however, we see the federal government trampling and, you know, nibbling so much and, you know, getting so nosy into the affairs of the governors. This is what the problem is from day one with Amotekun. And this is exactly what we are saying, that allow them to do their job. Allow them to deliver to the states. Allow them to deliver to the citizens. Because at the end of the day, the job and the primary role of all governments is to protect the citizens and protect the property. But we're not seeing that happen. And at least, let's give it again to Benue State, Governor Autumn, organizing his own. His bab tree is there. I mean, they've organized their own in Kano. So many states are equally doing the same. In Lagos State, I have a problem there. The problem is this. We have the Lagos Neighborhood Safety Corps. But please, those in the studio there with you in the TVC, ask yourself this question. How many times have you seen all these guys walk around the streets to even engage with the member of the public there to see what is going on? I think this is this a problem we're having, and these are issues we're not actually talking about. I have been engaged with some of them. I have tried as much as possible to see into this is how things should be done, but it has never been done that way. I am a Nigerian. I live in London. I see how things are done. I see how community police work in the country. And I see the result they are actually giving out to the police officers. So I think we need to emulate that and bring them back on board and let's see how it's going to work. The situation is getting more tense. And right now we're facing what we call the political um, hand change era. And the question is who is going to be the loser who is going to be a victim, how do we contain all this? It's going to be overwhelming for the police, the civil defense, and the whole of security agencies we have. But how well prepared are we? How well prepared is our governors? Because all these presidential candidates will come to different states, and how do we want to contain and make sure that nothing happens to our citizens, our members of the public, our brothers and sisters? Those are the key things that the president should be looking into that. During my transition now from my own um, presidency to the next person, how do I make sure that I leave a good, long-lasting legacy mm. that people can talk about in a positive way? All um, right, we'll, we'll continue this conversation after this break. Don't go away, you're watching TVC Breakfast. Thank you very much for staying with us. We're still talking about efforts uh, made by the Southwest security outfits, that's Amoteco, to secure uh, the Southwest region, of course, in the face of um, rather serious security uh, breaches here and there. Femi Aratokuale, before we, we let you go, what are your final uh, thoughts in, in this regard? I know um, Sam was trying to ask you a question. Perhaps he should just have the final uh, round now. 
Yeah, I was. Okay. I was. Uh, hold on. I was uh, trying to say that uh, in handling metropolitan areas uh, in the country, why can't we follow the Lagos model? I, I you know, the Lagos has a, a, what you can call a situation room or a command room, whatever you whatever you call it, where you can where you have where you have cameras seen and unseen that you can get. A, a, a sweeping view of what is going on in Lagos and they're trying to improve it into biometrics and all of that. The governor spoke extensively of, 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 on, it, uh, on it recently. We need a sweep of, of the country like that. Uh, what does it take to have that? If you have it in Ondo, you have it in Ibadan. You can have it, uh, you can have it in a place like Akure and have enough uh, and sub, and sub um, what do you call it, sub situation rooms in smaller places, so that you have people who are manning. And look, we saw you see all these things in uh, in, in the U.S. where when the crime happens in the situation room, they say this is where he is, that's where the car is going, that's where that fire fellow is. They have it in London, where you have it. So, so you can narrow in the criminal, you can narrow in what he has done, you can trace him, and things like that. Why can't we do that? What does it take? Um, thank you so much for this um, question and contribution. Um, before I go or before I take my leave, it sounds a bit funny, but it's not funny. In here with me, I have this. With me, I have this. This is a body one camera, and this is a radio. The question is this, with all the security budget vote being given to governors as far back as 1999, that we've started this new democracy. What has been spent? How many CCTV cameras have we seen around the streets or along the roads? These are questions we should ask. And this is exactly why security seems to have overwhelmed a lot of these security um, agencies and officers we have. Don't get me wrong, please. The guys are doing their job. They are trying their best, irrespective of the fact that nothing is on ground. They are physically using their strength Work, which is not fair on their own part. But however, the government, um, the, the, the corporate bodies must come together now and look at it and look, we need to do something. And what we can do is this, let us supply you with this, let us train some set of guys to handle this and to handle that. This is going to be another way of creating job and wealth creation as well. Why are we not looking into all this? If you look along um, Todd Mayland Bridge down to Warunshoki, it's always a very hostile area. No CCTV camera to actually look into the activities of criminals walking around there. No, they are hidden, they are hidden cameras. Even of places, even they are hidden highways. cameras you can't see. I, 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 I refuse to believe there are cameras walking there. Even if you look at Ojota, if you look at Ikeja, if you look at so many places, how many times have you seen TV stations cover events that shows life exactly what is happening. These are things that should be interlinked. And this is where I keep questioning, why do we have computer science students in Nigeria in the first place? Why do we have computer science departments that they cannot even think and look at it this way that, oh, guys, let us have this project. Let us see how it's going to work. It's All a right. pilot thing. Let's make it work. It is high time we put technology into security right. to work for us in Nigeria today. Right. Femi Aratoku Ale, we thank you very much for your contributions on TVC uh, Breakfast at this time. Many thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, it, the correction needs to be made that uh, I remember when the command center was being built in uh, Lagos at that time, and uh, we could see parts of uh, Lagos, Lagos straight from the situation room. I saw a shoot there. I saw people moving around. I saw a Jota. So there, there are these things we are those, they, those things are already in, in play. He probably doesn't know. Those things are in play. Uh, someone who is the governor was the one who is the governor now was was central to building that uh, I built it. Oh you built you were there too, huh? So you can speak right. to it. Right. Yeah. And then the concern like, is how like, this can be replicated like what I'm saying is that see, Lagos example should be yeah. Looked at as a modern and yes. real estate. Mm. Yes. Don't forget that before the turn of the century, mm. Lagos population will be 100 million. And if you look at. Lagos is already a country bigger than That's Zola. what I'm saying. That's where I'm coming bigger to. Bigger than Belgium. That's what I'm coming to. <laughs> there is no African country countries. in the world that doesn't have its own Lagos. Mm. New yes. York is for US, mm. London is for mm. uh, UK. Britain, and uh, Johannesburg is for South Africa, Cairo is Paris. for Egypt, Paris is for France. In all those countries, mm. 
the government, government federal government doesn't have, don't abandon them. Mm -hmm. With the resources the government is getting, you, it's not possible to address all issues. And that's why many people are concerned about Lagos. So you are not looking at London. Put the side aside with Lagos. Do you think British government abandoned London? Mm. Lagos has been abandoned by the federal government since, his, since the 60s, he was, was, his, was the capital. And that's not fair on Lagos. Mm. When you look at all the roads in, in, in Lagos and look at the money Lagos is making, do you tax more? Do you do what more? You have to improvise. So right. at the moment, what Lagos is doing, we, it should be an example for other governors are doing. All the agencies that are in Lagos, if it were to be in other states, the case won't be as worse as it. So in, in finally, there must be consequence. People who have found wanting to be sent to jail. If you don't do that, they'll keep coming back to your state. Mm. If you start talking softly about Oh, maybe the miss road, they, they don't, you don't miss road by putting cutlass in your pocket. Absolutely. Putting that guy in your mm -hmm. pocket. Mm -hmm. What has happened in our world? We want to see people going to jail. We want to see people punished for coming into that state with the description of being a criminal. We want to see that consequence. That All will right. send a message to people who may want to come. In the future, but you indeed mean this. All of us are into it together. We talked about it. We've uh, run out of time, though. Yes, we we'll uh, still have to bring in Theo Philos, who is yes, standing by yes. uh, for some views of newspaper readers to trend in mm. stories at this time. Of course, we say a big thank you to it's you, Raza Kolokoba, for you. Uh, coming in much. and yeah. giving us your robust uh, views mm. on insecurity.